All right, good afternoon and welcome to NCIA's Industry Essentials Educational Webinars. We're very excited to have our members and supporters join us for a very special edition of our NCIA Committee Insight Series today. We will begin the presentation in just a few minutes while we wait for our attendees to fill in and the countdown timer to conclude. In the meantime, please participate in the icebreaker poll, which we've just enabled, to provide the panelists with some valuable insights related to your involvement with and interest in committee participation. Stay tuned throughout the session as well as our panelists will be asking for feedback and participation a number of times, and we do want to ensure this conversation is both engaging and interactive. Additionally, use this time to get comfortable with inside the Zoom platform by posting a quick welcome message in the chat room. Let us know where you're joining from, what NCIA member business you're here representing, and what you're hoping to learn today. Finally, we will be conducting Q&A throughout the presentation, so please pose any questions that you have throughout. You can do so by clicking the Q&A button that you'll find along the bottom toolbar within the Zoom platform. Even if you don't have anything to contribute to the conversation question-wise, please do participate in the Q&A process throughout the webinar by heading over to the bulletin board and giving an upvote to any questions that you think are particularly worthwhile and can contribute to the conversation. Perfect. We've got just over a dozen people in here. I see a few of our all-star webinar participants and alumni from our industry essential sessions over the few last weeks. So thank you all so much for joining. Let us know where you're joining from, what business you're here representing, special points if you're an NCIA member, and what you're hoping to learn from today's session. Perfect, coming up on the last minute here. If you haven't participated in that icebreaker poll, please do. It will really help our panelists get some really valuable insights from the audience members learning about your previous participation, working on committees with other associations that you might have been a part of, as well as your interest in participating with NCIA, in particular with our committee program. Perfect, coming in the last 60 seconds. All of the people that do participate in our icebreaker poll will be entered into a giveaway for some sweet NCIA swag. So don't miss your opportunity to do that. Coming up in the last 30 seconds here. Perfect. I've only seen a few quick messages in the uh, chat room. So if you did just join us, please do post a quick welcome message in the chat room. Let us know where you're uh, calling in from, what business you're representing, special points if you're an NCIA member, and uh, why you joined the webinar this afternoon. Yes, Trevor, NCIA swag is fantastic. Perfect, coming up in the last 10 seconds here. All right, participate in that icebreaker poll and post a quick welcome message if you haven't. We're right about to get things kicked off. All right, good afternoon and welcome to NCIA's Industry Essentials Educational Webinar Series, our new digital platform featuring a variety of programs to provide you timely, engaging, and essential education when and where you need it most. My name is Brian Gilbert, the events manager here at NCIA, and I'm very excited to welcome you all to another episode in our NCIA Committee Insights series this afternoon. If you're just joining us, please be aware we'll be conducting Q&A throughout the presentation, so please pose any questions to the board by pressing the Q&A button along the bottom toolbar. Even if you don't have any questions yourself, stop on into the Q&A area throughout the webinar and give an upvote to any questions uh, that you think are particularly worthwhile and send them to the top of the feed. Now, let's get this show on the road. In today's session, our panel will discuss how committees are the heart of NCIA and one of the best ways to take advantage of your membership and be an active participant in our community. Thanks to our audience and shout out to the NCIA members for joining us this afternoon. And with that, please enjoy today's session entitled NCIA Committee Insights. How can you get more engaged with NCIA? Let's Talk Committees, being moderated by Rachel Kurtz McElane, the Deputy Director of Pol Public Policy, as well as the Program Lead for our member-led committees here at NCIA. Take it away, Rachel. Thanks, Brian. I'm very excited about this panel today um, because of just the superstar panelists that we have on here. I'm very active with NCIA. 
as always, and they have just been doing some great work with the committees. Um, to be clear though, we have 14 committees um, that are all listed up here. And so the, the today just represents five of those, those committees. Um, so I just wanna make sure to give a shout out to those committees that aren't represented here today um, and make sure that you check them out as well. Um, this is a new role for me. And um, one reason is we, in the past, we've just sort of let committees do their thing, but we would, you know, we, we know that um, there's, with so many committees, there's been a uh, desire to have more collaboration among the committees. And so that's something that I've, I'm going to be working on this year with those committees and um, making sure that, you know, the committees work together. Um, and so that's something too, if you're, if you're not sure exactly which committee you, you'd like to join, um, there's, you think, you know, maybe there's a few that would work out um, that you, you know, have interest in. Keep in mind that um, you still have the ability to collaborate with those other committees. So even if you're, if you're on just one, um, the idea is to get everybody working together. So now I would like to turn it over. I'm going to let the, the panelists introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their committee and some of the highlights from this last year and uh, where they see it going and, and just to do some bragging about their committee. And I think we're going to start with um, the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. And I'll let uh, my fabulous co-worker to hear uh, introduce himself and talk about his new role. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Tahir Johnson and I'm a business development manager here at NCIA. I've also taken on some uh, new role to, um, to lead our diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives and work closely with our diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. I'm so excited about um, some of the things that we have coming down the pipe that I know will make us better as an organization, as committees. Um, and I'm very happy to be joined by Mike Lamuto from the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, who can talk more about, um, about his experience and what they do there. Okay, thank you, Tahir. I really appreciate you. Um, I gotta say uh, that actually working with Tahir has been one of the things that's been great about being on this committee. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess what I'll, what I'll point out or highlight is uh, this is our first year, or this was our first year, this is our Nargo year, and it was uh, definitely challenging uh, figuring out, you know, one, how to be a new committee, and two, how to really accomplish the goal of diversity, equity, inclusion in the cannabis industry and the NCIA. Um, what we uh, realized coming in is, you know, we had a lot of these big ideas, what we want to do and want to implement, and uh, what we realized in the first year, I think the biggest accomplishment for us was to find cohesion in the committee and also really understand uh, how to increase the diversity, equity, and inclusion at NCIA itself. And so to hear, uh, and uh, as well as Chris Jackson on the board uh, of NCIA, have both been really helpful all year long in kind of being liaisons for us with um, NCIA. And it was definitely challenging at times this year. Um, you know, personally, I had a lot of hesitations entering the year even with you know, a lot of these kind of diversity, equity, inclusion type committees, um, you know, a lot of them end up being kind of you know, tokenized and more about talk. And there was definitely parts of the year where uh, we faced those challenges and we're wondering you know, what kind of impact we'd be able to have. And I would say that over the last several weeks, we've, uh, you know, once we really realized what was going on uh, you know, and what we could do, um, we've actually had a great response from the NCIA. And um, I, I think to me what that points out is a lot of us that kind of joined the committee came in having had frustrating experiences in the industry and even with NCI ourselves. And collectively, we've been able to actually put our voices together and, and start to see some of the change that we want to see. And there's still a lot of work to do, which we're really excited about for next year. Um, we have some initiatives for next year that we believe are going to really help get a lot more diverse voices uh, out there in the industry through the NCI platforms, such as the webinars and the conference panels and things of that nature. Um, even just, you know, being on this webinar right now, <laughs> for example. Um, and so, you know, we're really excited about that. And, you know, just looking at some of these brands here, 
there's a, it's very a very diverse crowd in the committee itself. Some of these brands are you know bigger companies that maybe some of their employees are part of the committee, such such as say uh, Blackbird uh, Jamal has been a great member of the committee, and then we have other brands here um, where the founders of these brands, these awesome brands and companies, um, have been a part of the committee. Supernova Women. Oh, sorry. Uh, so yeah, I was looking at uh, with uh, Supernova Women. Uh, Amber was actually the chair this year and has been the chair. Um, Cannabis uh, Cultural Association. That's Nelson Guerrero's organization, and he was the vice chair this year. Um, you know, some other great people, the People Dispensary, Christine De La Rosa, just really great people to work with. Uh, my company here, Down Mastery Performance, we're launching a, um, a, a social equity accelerator ourselves. Uh, the community organizer was uh, was um, was, was uh, Folsom Forge's. Uh, uh, Yaro, Kubrin, it's just a lot of really great people. And one of the great things that was also great was to see everybody being able to connect and collaborate with each other in a way that we might be, wouldn't have been able to before. So Sanctuary Farms, something that they're out there, they've been, um, you know, they, they're, they're part of what's going on in the Bay Area right now. A lot of places have been hit and looted. And so our committee has been able to actually work to support uh, some of the efforts that are happening there in the Bay Area. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, hand it over uh, to, to the next person. Thank you so much, Mike. Our next speaker is Elena. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Elena Rodriguez. I'm the managing director at RM3 Labs. We're the oldest cannabis testing lab in Colorado. We've been around since 2009, and I've been with RM3 Labs and in the cannabis space for about five years now. I joined the Scientific Advisory Committee back in 2017 when NCIA started their committees. I did it as a way to become more active within NCIA and also to raise our company's visibility in the cannabis space. And over the past three years, not only has SAC produced some interesting educational pieces for membership, we've also drafted responses for the FDA and NIDA and participated in reviewing speakers for NCIA's conferences. But more than that, I think we created a really awesome tribe of scientists, physicians, researchers, other scientific professionals, whom I consider my friends now. And right now, we're looking to expand that tribe. As you can see, there's a little less logos up on this page than the last one. So hopefully some of you great folks on this webinar will apply for the Scientific Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. Some highlights of what we worked on this year include a submission to NIDA regarding the standard THC dose, where we argued against a five milligram standard THC dose that's regardless of the method of consumption. We also recently published a blog on the endocannabinoid system authored by Ann Allworth of Cannabis Education Solutions and another blog on the vaping crisis from a physician's perspective that touches on the Evali crisis and COVID, which was authored by Cynthia Shelby Lane of Cynthia uh, Shelby Lane MD. And a couple weeks ago, we hosted a webinar on labels in cannabis and other industries, and that was by Cynthia and Tiffany Coleman of Copper State Farms. She's our uh, vice chair and next year she'll be our chair. I'm very excited to have her lead us. And on July 1st, about half of our committee will be hosting a webinar on the endo endocannabinoid system and how it interacts with cannabis. Uh, this is geared towards bud tenders and other customer facing in industry employees. And our goal with this webinar is to equip these employees with information about how cannabis interacts with our body. So um, we'll be going through also examples of what not to say to customers and frankly, just how to make statements without making medical claims. And next year, we'll continue producing educational materials on the endocannabinoid system. We think it's um, vastly misunderstood. And we're also going to develop a Mythbuster series where we debunk cannabis, uh, cannabis's most common myths um, on scientific issues and whatever our new members come up with. So I, I look forward to hopefully welcoming, welcoming some of you to our tribe soon. So with that, I'll turn it over. Thank you, Elena. Um, our next is Michael Cooper. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, I'm Michael Cooper. I'm the current chair of the State Regulations Committee. Uh, I'm also the co-chair of the NCIA Policy Council. In my day job, I'm the co-founder and managing member of Madison J Solutions here in New York City. We're a strategic regulatory consulting firm that helps operators and ancillaries in the adult use and hemp CBD markets identify and mitigate regulatory risk. Uh, to develop long-range plans to thrive in these highly regulated spaces. Now, that probably means you can guess why I was interested in uh, the State Regulations Committee. 
no one in this industry is generally surprised to learn how important state regulations are to the functioning of these businesses and to how the industry is shaped. As you can see from the slide in front of you, the State Regulations Committee really is a fantastic group uh, with operators and ancillaries coming together to analyze and educate membership on key elements and trends in state regulation. Uh, I've been lucky enough in my time on this committee to really become friends with some of these folks. And you know, just as a side benefit, it's not why you sign up for, for this kind of work, but it is a great benefit uh, just getting to know these people better. Uh, and if you look at these names, this is just a subset of the committee, uh, but obviously they speak for themselves in terms of the leadership roles that they play in the industry. You have leading plant touching companies, uh, national distributors of hemp goods, regulatory firms like mine, licensing firms, law firms, all of which are located across the country. Uh, for what it's worth, these are people uh, who meet up together now at industry events, whether that's NCIA shows or, sorry, Brian, even non-NCIA shows that we go to. Uh, we will often meet up just so that we can catch up in person. Uh, we work together on initiatives, both business-related work, but also, frankly, things to help the industry that are outside the scope of the SRC. Uh, we do that on our free time. What are some of the projects that we've uh, worked on this year uh, to give you some uh, something of a flavor of the work. Uh, one thing we had is a subcommittee fo focused on social equity. Uh, and you may have seen their panel on key elements of state social equity provisions at the Boston conference in February, uh, when Rachel was talking about mm -hmm. fostering more collaboration between the committees. Uh, that's definitely something uh, where you can see an obvious intersection between our committee uh, and Mike's committee in the future, and hopefully that we can collaborate uh, in the future on those issues. We had a series of work product come out on interstate commerce, which is a really cool issue uh, from my vantage. That was coordinated with the Policy Council. We had a series of blogs about social consumption rules from across the country, uh, but that wasn't just written in a vacuum. We had leadership on that from actual licensed operators who have social consumption. Uh, we had webinars on what the attendees needed to know about state regulations in two uh, brand new adult use markets, Michigan and Illinois. Maybe some of you uh, heard my voice on that one, uh, on the Illinois one a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and something that is near and dear to my heart, uh, each of the past two years, we've had a panel on the key national regulatory trends uh, that we've identified in state regulations at the NCIA's major national show uh, that's going to be in San Francisco this year. I think it's a great example of sort of the sort of the type of capstone that we can put by bringing this analysis from all of these different verticals. Um, you know, you look at something like Veritech. Veritech is on the, the program support side, on the government support side. Uh, you look at something like Flora, that's a plant touching operator. You bring that wisdom together and talk about what people are seeing across the country and what's coming next. Uh, to me, it's a it's a real great uh, forum and opportunity, and hopefully many of you will will apply and join the group next year uh, when I'm no longer chair, unfortunately. Great, thank you so much, Michael. Uh, Janine is up next. Terrific. Hello, everybody. I'm Janine Moss, and I am the outgoing chair of the Marketing and Advertising Committee. And you can, oops, where's my roster? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you a bit about me first. Um, most people know me as the founder of Anabi, which is the chic and discreet odor-proof accessories company. But I'm also a brand marketer and a product development person with a company called Outfront Solutions. That's what you see in the top of your screen. And uh, we just did a webinar on crisis communications because one of the things I love about NCIA is when there's something that comes up, we all, all of us from all these committees jump forward and say, hey, we can contribute. And so that's what happened with crisis communications. I have a big background in that. We define brand strategy for both THC and CBD brands. Um, we're bringing cannabis products to market and we help companies uh, with their business development with warm introductions uh, across the board. So I got into cannabis in 2015. I immediately uh, joined NCIA and I immediately joined a, a committee because that's where you plug in and you learn what's going on and, and really get to know the people. 
Um, so I'm going to talk about this committee a little bit. So um, we always say, well, we are a working committee. We do not do a lot of dithering around. We're deadline people. So when we come into a, a session, as we did this year, 2019, 2020, we say to ourselves, what does the industry need right now? What special skills do we have that's going to propel that? And uh, I think 100% of us on this committee believe that now is the time when a small voice can make an outsized difference. So now is the time to join a committee uh, because you'll have really wide ranging impact. Um, so my goals, I'll just talk about me as the chair this year, my goals for the committee was do good work on behalf of the industry, number one to elevate the personal profiles of all these people who you see on this uh, slide and introduce all these folks to other industry luminaries and other new ideas and be stimulating. So that's what I saw my role as. And, and um, then what we did is we let everybody, we, we all put our heads together on those other thoughts. And what we decided to do this year was a speaker's directory. Um, and that what that means is gathering all the people who have topics that they can speak about. We want to counter negative information that's out there, and we want to get us all speaking with one voice. Um, and so creating a directory uh, that, that uh, conference organizers and press can reach into is a real big priority in our opinion. We're almost there, ready to launch. Um, we also did a have a 2020 effort going where we're trying to educate uh, about cannabis out there in the cannabis legislation and also get us all, uh, make us a force to be reckoned with politically. And then third, um, we also work on, on what you would expect, which is advertising access. As you well know, we don't have advertising, the kind of advertising access that we need. And so this committee has done a bunch of efforts to connect with all kinds of associations, gather um, a lot of people behind our efforts to change laws and find ways to work around the advertising restrictions. So um, where we're going next is um, Amy from Simplify, Amy Larson is going to be taking this over. Um, and she, uh, you know, one of the huge things is cannabis is essential. Um, and there's a lot of ways to interpret that. But the communicators and marketers on this team are going to take a very proactive approach to generating content that's going to sway hearts and minds. Um, and so that's what we're going. And if you're into that, please join us. Everybody here is a rock star. They're contributing their agency work, their research work, their digital work, you know, uh, to you as the industry and to as, as NCIA. So thanks very much. Thank you, Janine. And last but certainly not least is Trevor. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's very exciting. Um, I'll walk you through this roster and then I'll give you a little bit in it of insight to, of who I am. Um, Control Point, is, I, am, I am the founder of Control Point, which is a food safety firm, but we're not just about food safety. We're also about operational excellence. Uh, and we joined I believe in 2017, but I may have to phone a, fan, a friend for a confirmation on that. But we have an incredible team here and everybody is active from the cannabis world. And a lot of people are also active from their other industries, uh, law firms that are a part of the team. We have labs that are a part of the team. And then we have other consulting firms that are a part of the team. And everybody's very boots on the ground and hands-on in what we're doing, which is fascinating. And we actually were the infused product committee first, and we changed into the cannabis manufacturing committee. There's tons of value here. And to give an example, somebody can, can come forward and say, hey, I'm having trouble with something. I sit on this other committee. What are your thoughts on it? And then we put it together in front of the team and we try to provide solutions. So there's value that you all can gain from joining the National Cannabis Industry Association and joining the committee of your choice, but also working throughout with the other committee members and uh, 
another example of that is a testing paper that we've written. It's in the final editing process and being published very soon. And the SAC committee took advantage, uh, or not even took advantage, but helped us tremendously in providing a lot of insight. So kudos and compliments to Elena for taking the lead on that. We also have the GMP paper that we wrote, which led into a webinar and is up on the website. I encourage you to go find it. And uh, if you just want the direct link, please reach out, I'll guide you to it. We have a nomenclature resource that we've designed that would is, is going to be active and fluid. So as these definitions change or they have various versions of them, we're going to publish that throughout the next term for the Cannabis Manufacturing Committee. We also have a document that we wrote on eValley, the electronic cigarette or vaping product use with lung injury. And we've taken on a lot more year after year and we're continuing to take on even more. We like a good challenge, but we're here to be representatives for the entire industry, not just ourselves individually. To give you a little bit of background about who I am, I started my career in kitchens, washing dishes, and worked my way through the ranks, got my butt kicked, moved to New York City, went to culinary school, got into food manufacturing after culinary school, and was fed to the wolves. But through those failures, I really learned how to make those into opportunities, working with federal inspectors, as well as working with other countries that wanted the products that we were making. And I was diagnosed with epilepsy, and that's when my interest for cannabis just skyrocketed. But it's not just for myself. It's for other patients that have to live with very challenging things, and I'm trying to generate data and scientific papers that can be published in journals for other people to see. You know, very valid science, very strong data to put in front of our um, our elected officials to understand the value of this plant. And uh, I'm sure I could run on all day, but let's get deeper into what we have coming. Great. Rachel, Thank it's up you for so you. <laughs> um, I think now we can, more, everyone's finished introducing themselves and their committee. Now we're gonna, chat amongst each other. Um, I think, you know, that was a really great kind of, you know, visual of, you know, the, the all the different kind of brands that are part of these committees. And, and really, you know, you, everybody got to see those brands. And that's something that's pretty cool about being on a committee too, is that you're really getting to um, elevate your brand out there and get it out. And, um, you know, Michael Cooper, you, like you said, you're chair of the SRC State Regulations Committee and a co-chair of the Policy Council, so you're pretty busy with NCIA. I'm curious, how did you first initially get interested in, in joining NCIA and, um, you know, like how long have you been a member? Sure. Uh, so we've been a member, I think, three years now. Uh, and when we got into this industry, one of the things that we realized was there's a lot of really fascinating policy questions that impact the whole industry. And this is, in our view, one of the, if not the best way uh, to provide a voice to the industry, right? This is the leading, the largest nonprofit trade association uh, in the cannabis industry, and we wanted to play a role in that. Uh, to help shape where the industry was going. Now that meant that uh, we wanted to get on uh, as many of these uh, opportunities and, and make our voices heard as we could. So yes, the Policy Council, uh, I'm on this committee. You may have seen our logo uh, uh, on Janine's slide. One of my colleagues sits on her committee. Uh, to us, this is one of the best ways to get to do really interesting, exciting work, get to meet like-minded individuals uh, and get to make an impact on the industry. Elena, how about you? When did you first get connected with NCIA and what, what drove that decision? 
So RM3 Labs has been a member since 2016, and I really didn't know about NCIA back then. I, I uh, didn't really even know what we were using our membership for. So I started getting really involved when I noticed that uh, NCIA holds these caucuses, which is a great way to find out uh, federally on a federal national level what's going on because so often we're all in our own states and just consumed with what's going on in our own states that we don't even know what's going on on a national level. So I really was intrigued by that for NCIA so that's how I got started and and it just made me really passionate about the organization and so I wanted to do more. So I found out about the committees. Uh, scientific advisory committee was just made for me. I'm a scientist. I work in a lab so um, and uh, being a member of NCIA is super important to me and our company because it's one of the largest think tanks. I think collectively the Policy Council and all 14 committees together, it's one of the greatest think tanks and it's just such an honor to have a seat at the table and to be able to uh, discuss all these important conversations that we have in cannabis. And your membership dollars go directly to three full-time lobbyists, which I think is stellar. I, I just can't thank them enough for fighting day in and day out for all of us. So I, I think it's really important to be a member of NCIA and to be a member of the committees to get your brand out there, to meet more people, to network, to produce best practices for the, the industry, so. Great. And feel free, and anyone else, to uh, jump in if you, if you uh, want to answer a question or have questions for other panelists with each other. Um, I'd like to my, my, oh. yeah, Janine. I'd like to just plug in uh, to what you said about NCIA in that it's really the leadership of the industry that you're going to find at NCIA. It's people who are investing, right? If you're if you're in this industry and you mean it, then you need to invest in it. And so the people who are investing, putting their money and their time and their talents, are going to be leading. So when I joined, I got to meet all of them and I get to hear what their points of view are and I get, I get to fast track on my perspectives of where we're going and what's going to be important. And the, the only thing about the committees, I also wanted to add this because I forgot to say this. Um, everyone in my committee, I'm going to say almost everyone has done business together. And why wouldn't we? We get to know each other. We know what our values are. We know that we, what we can do. Um, and um, one of my committee members yesterday, she made the ultimate compliment, in my opinion, about our committee, which was that she said, the bonds that have been created here will never be broken. And that's how I feel about our committee and also about NCIA. Oh, that's great. Yeah. This, um, Mike, you, how about you? When did you first get involved with NCIA and um, have you also gotten to know some of your fellow committee members that way. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, what I'd like to throw out here and, and kind of give a little bit of the, uh, the diversity, equity, inclusion lens here, which is also a social equity lens as well as a legacy lens. Um, you know, I myself only joined NCA maybe about two years ago. Um, I was aware of NCA for, for many years. Um, I've been in the industry for 20 something years. Um, so started out in the unregulated markets, and that's basically was my, you know, my career for uh, most of my, you know, my early career. Um, I grew up in the industry out in California, and, um, you know, for the most part, a lot of us that, that kind of grew up that way and entered the industry from a legacy perspective, uh, I know, speaking for myself as well as others on, our, on, my, on the DEI committee, there's, you know, a lot of trepidation uh, when it comes to joining uh, more regulated type of efforts. <laughs> Um, and so one of the things that we've been really working on with the DEI committee is, um, is to kind of figure out how do, we, how do we build that bridge. And so for myself, a couple years ago, you know, I, I knew that I wanted to be in the regulated industry for years. About seven, eight years ago, we made the decision to, to start trying to figure out how to get into the regulated industry. But coming from the backgrounds that a lot of us came from, it, it really took, you know, that many years just to figure out how to navigate those waters at all. Um, that uh, I know that you know, everybody faces the challenges of cannabis, uh, but I think that there is a, an extra layer that, that is involved when you're talking about uh, coming from the legacy space and coming from communities that are impacted by the war on drugs. And a lot of people on our committee are, are coming from these areas. And so I found a lot of camaraderie actually in, in this committee because it's not only that, you know, uh, we're working towards one goal and we have one similar background. 
is that honestly, it's, it's honestly hard to find folks within the cannabis industry that, that kind of straddle that, uh, that, that bridge that gap. And so it's been really awesome to work with the people on the committee uh, over the last year and find that camaraderie. And I, I agree with Janine. It's like some of the folks that I'm with right now on this committee, I, we've known each other for a year and I, I feel like I've met friends for life. So um, it, it's been really great. And I feel really excited about the impact that we're going to be able to make because what we're hoping to do over this next year is really, you know, take our experiences of bridging that gap and help others that are maybe been a little bit wary to, to join the industry in a certain way or that are struggling to join the industry in a certain way or struggling to succeed in it in a certain way, kind of help bridge, bridge that gap. So I hope that helps answer that question. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, that makes me very happy to hear that um, about the, the camaraderie that, that happens on these committees. Um, to, and Trevor, uh, I wanted to ask you the, um, you know, as, as far as your, you know, a term goes and being chair, how, what is your, you know, the roadmap for you, you know, when you're planning the term and um, any adjustments you had to make along the way? Thank you for that, Rachel. I think uh, I just need to check, make sure that my audio is on, but um, the, the roadmap is, is how we plan out business. We put together, we put together what we want to, to get out of this and then who is going to take on which role and how it's going to be done, how often we're going to meet. We look at everybody's calendar and say, what works for you so that you can join and be a part of this? You know, there's roughly about four to five hours to commit on a monthly basis. But if you want something larger out of this, then commit more time and we can make it happen. So it's not a one size fits all, but we have to go through, make a roadmap and then adjust as necessary. If the first Tuesday of the month no longer works, we adjust. You know, we're used to dealing with um, various things not really going so well in the food industry, and we help to use that in the cannabis industry. It's like, you know, everything is not so difficult when you already have a plan in place. We just uh, pick up and adjust very quickly, much faster that way. But some of the challenges are and I'll put it into some theoretical thing, but you have 300 people who are very excited. Yes, we want to join. You have 30 people who commit to joining, three people that actually commit and are active. Those are not real numbers, but you have to remember if you're committing to something like this, then you need to make sure that you are, are sticking to your word. You know doing what you said you were going to do. And if you can't just communicate with the team, what comes up, why that's changed. And then we go from there. And obviously I talk with my hands a lot. <laughs> I'll just say that on our committee, we've got huge participation and we, you know, if you don't participate, we check in with you and ask you if you still want to be on it because we'll get three or four times the number of people applying as we can actually accept at a given time. So our committee is about 20 people, which is a lot, but everybody works their butts off. They really do. And Janine, oh, I'm sorry, Trevor. No, no, I, I just wanted to say, I, I don't think I really gave as much respect to the Cannabis Manufacturing Committee as, as they deserve. We have very active team members. There were few or logos there because some people committed and then they had to pull out and they simply let us know and it was like cool hopefully next term you're on board with us because we'd love to have you you know we we do have a, an incredible committee and it's gotten stronger and stronger and stronger so as we morph from infused product committee to cannabis manufacturing committee we adjusted and reevaluated. so i just wanted to offer this because those are great points and when trevor was talking about the roadmap I thought that it might be helpful to people. The way that this works is the roadmap isn't set in stone by the committee chair sort of in sitting alone in our castle. It's the product of the committee coming together once it's seated to talk about what you want to do uh, during that term. So all of the things that I mentioned uh, that our committee did this year at the SRC are things that we discussed in our kickoff meeting. Uh, and it's what people were passionate about, these projects. And then we broke into small groups uh, and we got to work to hit the milestones that we set out. And, you know, look, people get sick, people have things come up where sometimes deadlines don't get hit perfectly. Uh, but then we recalibrate and we, we do our best to hit those things uh, in the near future because 
these are the things that the committee is passionate about. So I think uh, if you have something that you're excited about under any of these umbrellas, definitely apply uh, and tell us why that's a good project for the year. Exactly. Fa passion goes a long way. I mean, we all passionately advocate for the things that we believe in. And then as a group, we come up with it and pursue it. And this year we had committee interrupt us, as you probably all know. Um, so a lot of the things that we were working on couldn't go all the way to fruition. But I think everybody on this call and probably everybody on the committees, we're all entrepreneurial. This is a new interest stream. We're building as the wheel, you know, the bus is driving, we're building, the, putting on the wheels. So we're all really um, flexible in figuring out how to keep going and how, towards our goal, which is advancing the industry. Yeah, very much so. And to follow up that point that Jeannie made and also echo what's been said by some of the other panelists, um, you know, I often have the opportunity to speak to people who are not yet members of NCIA, and I, I really strongly feel that joining a committee um, is one of the greatest opportunities that you have to get active in the organization, so there's no better time to join. Um, as, as many of them as state have stated, the committees are really industry leaders in each of the different sectors. Um, of the industry that they that they cover. So there's no better way to make your voice heard. As you've heard, they've contributed to um, pieces that will help influence legislation. They've been able to create business relationships together and also camaraderie. Um, and then I'll say with NCIA being the industry's oldest and largest trade association, when people often look to us for expertise in these categories, you all are the thought leaders in each of those areas that are on the front lines fighting these, this fight, educating, and also getting highlighted. So as you're thinking of ways to grow your cannabis business, the investment that you make in both time and what it costs for NCIA membership, I certainly see it as a great return on investment for any business owner, regardless of what area of the industry you're in. And I would strongly commit, um, I would strongly recommend that if you've been thinking about NCIA, the time is now and you definitely want to get active in one of those committees. I hate to keep popping in, but one of the things that we haven't talked about is fun. And we've talked a lot about work. So don't think that just because you joined this community, you're just going to get another job. And you will get some more work for sure. But it's really so much fun. I mean, we, we meet together outside of the committee. We meet at all the uh, events like the summit. We meet at MJ BizCon. And, you know, we really, we really all help each other a lot. And I just love everybody on the committee. We're a big love fest. So keep that in mind, too. Yeah, and, that's, and you mentioned how there are so many applicants um, for your committee. And, and, you know, unfortunately, we can't have, you know, 300 people on a committee. So we, you, you know, we work with the chairs of each committee to pick the committee for the next term. Um, but we, we understand that sometimes people will have to drop off for whatever reason. And so, and um, we know that if somebody doesn't get picked, we want to make sure we do have some kind of standbys um, so that, you know, so if you don't get picked for committee, um, then you do have the opportunity to still get put on if, if the space opens up. Um, just to be clear, we're gonna work on that because, you know, like you said, there could be somebody who didn't get picked but really did have a lot of passion for that committee. And if somebody else drops off, we, we want to give them that opportunity for sure. So Elena, there is a question for you. you they want to hear some more about uh, and any cross collaboration that the, the essay, the scientific advisory committee worked on this sure. term. So um, I know that this is one of the goals going forward with committees is to have more cross uh, collaboration between the committees. Um, and I know that one of the re uh, one of the ways they're doing that is having liaison so that we can um, have people who are dedicated to making sure they're speaking between the committees. One of the things that we did in the background this year to cross co collaborate is um, we reviewed uh, one of the earlier drafts of Trevor's committee's um, 
terminology work that they're working on. So I think that's an excellent way for all committees to um, collaborate is to just turn over your drafts of what you're working on um, to a few of, of the other committees and get their thoughts because uh, something like a terminology paper isn't going to just be used by manufacturers, it's going to be used by everybody. So, um, and that just gives us more perspective on the materials that we publish. Um, actually, uh, one of the first collaborations was years ago with Trevor, um, they were working on a, on a, um, uh, 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 testing something on testing because the manufacturers were in the fuse product makers were really upset about you know the the um, non consistencies between labs and sending the same sample to different labs getting different answers so um, they were going to just publish a paper from their perspective and I suggested that we do it kind of more of an interview style in it and I'll link it here because I just pulled it up but um uh, that was a really fun project that we did. And um, I've been asked in the past uh, from the Cannabis uh, Cultivation Committee uh, to give them some important notes on, they were doing um, a project on um, how to like start up a grow facility and they wanted what are the most important points for people to consider on a scientific standpoint, like sanitation, microbes that may be in there. So we like formulate me and um, the chair at the time, which was Paul, uh, formulated some uh, uh, bullet points for them in their uh, work. So I think, you know, just crossing ideas back and forth uh, across each other, it'll, it makes everything that we produce better. So. Yeah. yeah and, sure. <laughs> and I was just going to say, since we're actually on the topic of collaboration, um, I'll say that that's one of the things that I'm most excited about as we um, look into next year's committee season, um, especially as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So one of our biggest goals is to make sure that we, um, you know, knowing that we have experts in so many different areas is to know that we have a diverse um, set of experiences, um, you know, set of um, expertise to contribute to that conversation. Because we know that when you have the input of, um, you know, people from different sexual orientations, both male and female, both people of color, um, you know, we know that we, that by having that diversity, we know that we're stronger and come out with a better product. So that's also a huge focus of ours as we look into um, next year, trying to make sure that we can, um, you know, just be better as an industry um, and also be stronger together um, with our, not only our message, but our end of the, our product that we're putting out as an end result. On, on the topic of collaboration, uh, NCIA has just put together a really um, nice new tool, and I know you'll all be using it uh, just to mention it, but um, the speakers directory that the Mac is working on is going to be an amazing tool for everybody um, on this call uh, in that it's, you know, for example, all the heads of the, com of the uh, committees and their members will be in there as subject matter experts. And so the, the papers and things that you're doing, the things that you're publishing will be in your profile there and you'll you know, so you'll be able to be pushed out and found as experts so joining NCIA again is going to give you access to that speakers directory once that gets uh, put forward and it's gonna be a huge collaboration tool in terms of communication externally awesome I'd love to um, build on uh, what you guys are saying there too about collaboration I think um, you know, with uh, Janine, that, that tool I think is going to be amazing. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and, uh, you know, Alina and, and Michael, you guys have both mentioned uh, collaboration between committees and to hear, you know, to second that, uh, you know, that's something we're really looking forward to is being able to collaborate with your guys' committees, especially now that we kind of have our feet under us a little bit more for year two. We're really looking forward to reaching out and being able to collaborate more with you guys. Um, and something else too, just on, uh, you know, on the internal collaboration side of things, um, I wanted to throw out a, 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 a specific example um, for how the benefit of being in the committee and the collaboration that happens within the committee is that um, one of our committee members, Ramon Garcia, has been working on a fundraiser uh, with um, Tucky, uh, from Tucky from once and more in the Bay Area to help a lot of the businesses that have been impacted by the looting and, and, and such. And, um, you know, so instead of normally being in the silo that he maybe operates in a lot of the time within the Bay Area, being able to jump on the committee call, we were able to plug in and other members of the committee were able to plug in and help with their resources and what they're working on. And, and I know that this is true with other committees. It, it must be, and I can't just be diversity, equity, inclusion, but we often as individuals operate in our own silos. And I think one of the big opportunities of being on a committee in NCIA is the ability to operate collaboratively and learn from each other and accelerate your growth as a company and in the industry at large. 
so I just wanted to throw that out there and thank everybody for everything everybody else is doing. It's awesome. Yeah, and another uh, another thing that I goal of mine too um, for the committees is you know there are there are associations for everything <laughs> um, and we frequently get contacted by them uh, by other associations that are just you know sort of mainstream associations but they're realizing that you know their members are now interacting with cannabis companies um, for instance we were contacted by the HVAC Association and Something I'd like to really start doing is now, if they do contact us, get them in touch with like the facilities design committee, um, or you know, and and so maybe there there's ways for even more collaboration outside with these other kind of mainstream um, groups, and like you know, maybe they do need a speaker at their conference, or or they need to learn more about what's happening with cannabis, and so that the committee will be probably the best experts, you know, um, to, to work with them, to reach out to them. Um, and also, you know, we, we use our, the, you know, as an organization, we often will use the committees to help us do, do work. <laughs> um, you know, that we're, we are a nonprofit where, you know, we our staff is, um, just works, all, everybody just works really hard nonstop, but, so we often need some help. I know, um, Janine's committee has definitely helped us out um, when we've needed some work, you know, for some maybe a promotional design or something like that. Um, and so that's another thing too is, um, you know, putting that in front of you, like, you know, with the, the NIDA comments that Elena mentioned, that was something that came up and it's like, oh, that would be, you know, we want to be able to, to comment on that, but that's, you know, we don't have the expertise as, as staff. We need we need help from the from the experts. So we really appreciate when when committees step up and give us some assistance. <laughs> you know, um, I was going to say something about that, which is that we have a team of the best marketers in cannabis. You know, branding and marketing people and communications people. So anybody on this uh, call, anybody who's a chair or going to be a chair or be a committee member, when you create a product and you want to figure out how to push it out, feel free to get in touch and say, hey, Mac, what do you guys, what are your recommendations for a communications plan for this product? Because you have amazing products. So, uh, you know, so we need to get them out further and wider. For sure. And I'll also say, as someone who's on the outreach slash sales side of the organization at NCIA, I definitely see the committees as, a, as an opportunity for just that reason. Because with us having 2,000 members, you know, all across the country, as I have people reach out to me um, externally and say, hey, um, who can I talk to about a cannabis HR issue? The first place I'm going to look is our HR committee. If somebody asks, hey, who can I talk to about marketing? The first place that I'm going to look is our marketing committee because I don't have the, the time or resource, to, you know, or, or even actually know all of our 2,000 members, but the people that are active on the committees. Um, you know, I know their expertise. I've seen their blogs. I've seen them on the webinars. So that's another reason that getting active in the committees is such a, I'll say internally, just as a member of NCIA, it's such a great opportunity to expand your business and create opportunities with your peers here in the organization as well. I'd like to jump in and just highlight some of these comments, uh, also some of that data as far as who's with us today. We have people that are doing research, lawyers from manufacturing world, also more people from marketing, exciting. And um, on that, it's nice to see some people so close to home. I grew up in Southern Kentucky, so to see some people from Ohio, exciting, it's, it's great to see that. And also the environmental piece that somebody said they're working on we actually are publishing something. It's actually being reviewed. It's already finished, but there's a huge piece started out 40 pages. It's about 110 pages. And it is incredible. They give so much insight into the environmental side of cannabis indoors, outdoors, and you know what we need to do to make a massive change for the market, for all of us, for the benefit of everyone, and how many tax dollars we generate so we are preparing for when federalization comes, not if. 
and that's what we're all working toward <laughs> overall right now. Well, we're getting close to the uh, um, end of the session, so I want to give everyone a chance to give a, a 30 second final thought, um, and we'll go in the same order that we started with. So, Tahir, you want a final thought? Sure, sure. Again, I just want to, um, you know, give you one last push to tell you that this is a great time to join us at NCIA. Um, if you do decide to join, you definitely want to get active in the committees. Um, my contact information is there. Please feel free to reach out. And if anyone wants to reach me by phone, um, my phone number here at NCIA is 202-871-8793. I'm always glad to answer any questions that you have about membership, the committees, our DEI initiatives, or anything else that we're working on at NCIA, and I hope you will join us. Thanks to hear. Uh, Mike, final thoughts? Yeah, I just, I wanna say that I'm really excited about what the DEI committee is gonna be doing next year and helping to elevate diversity in the industry because it's so important. We have a lot of great leaders in the committee and we can definitely use some more, you know, I mean, if you're passionate about diversity, equity, inclusion in the committee, uh, in, in the cannabis industry, um, then, you know, please reach out. And if you have any questions, my email is in the contact info as well. If you have any questions about how it's been for us and what the experience has been like, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Mike. Elena, final thoughts. Well, my final thought would be to push everybody to join NCIA if you haven't already and to definitely join a committee because it really is a great way to be active and gain friends, gain me me members of your network. Um, it's a great platform to have your voice be heard, not only by the members, but the general public and government agencies. And honestly, volunteering your time for the greater good of this industry just feels good. Yeah, oh, that's great. <laughs> Um, Michael Cooper. Thanks. Look, I think that we all recognize that this industry uh, is at an inflection point and we're really moving towards uh, federal reform thanks to the work that so many people, including at NCIA, have done. To me, the committees, uh, including the SRC, but frankly, all of these committees are really important ways that you can get involved and shape the future of this industry today uh, before it is set in stone. This is a new industry and it is still being built. Uh, and so to me, it's been a fantastic year as chair and I'm really excited about what the committee will do going forward. And for as many of you as want to be a part of that, uh, whether it's the SRC or another committee, of potentially collaborating with the SRC to help shape this industry and make it better for everyone. Thanks, Michael. Um, Jadine. Yep. Well, Michael, you preempted part of what I was going to say. I was going to say that the even though it's growing as fast as it is, this industry is never going to be smaller than it is today. And so your participation now has a huge impact. You, you know, you can plant and nurture the seeds that you want to see grow. So this is a great time and you should join us. Thanks, Janine. And Trevor, your final thoughts. Well said, Janine. I think that's incredible uh, wording to say, you know, talk about how we're planting the seeds and then also nurturing them to, to continue to flourish. And, you know, for Everyone who's interested in joining, I, I really encourage you to do it. And here's a cat out of the bag. The Cannabis Manufacturing Committee does not have a vice chair that is taking chair role. So vice chair is open as well as the, uh, the chair role. And I will be chair emeritus. So we have things that like the nomenclature piece that we're still going to be working on because it's an active document. It's fluid. But you know, you, you have some insight and also you get to share what else you would like to see on it. I'll be reviewing all the applications and I'm very excited for it. So look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions regarding food safety, cannabis safety, reach out. I'll also tell you that ASI, Tyler, who's super active on the committee, um, is launching the, the cannabis safety and quality scheme that is approved by the GFSI board. 
And we're excited about that because we'll be able to help a lot of these clients into what does it mean to have a third party certification and how to do it effectively to grow your market. That's amazing, Trevor. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to all the panelists on here. And um, just a reminder that the committee application is it was posted in the chat, but it's, you can also always find it on our website under um, on the main committee's uh, page. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Brian. All right, fantastic. Thank you so much, Rachel. And, and thank you all of these amazing panelists, not only for the time that you contributed today into helping ensure that our committees are gonna be off on the best footing possible for this next term, but on all the amazing work and volunteer time that you contributed over the past year or even two years um, with some of you all. So um, let's give a big virtual round of applause to these amazing panelists. If you're in the audience, raise your hand virtually. And if you enjoyed today's session, post a quick message in the chat room, letting all these amazing panelists and chairs from our committees this past term uh, learn, let them know what you took away from today's session and how excited you are to go into this next term uh, with all of them. Uh, we do want to conclude the webinar today with just a few upcoming teases about NCIA's upcoming activities. So let's dive right into it. We hope you all continue your participation with the organization by joining us for the next edition of our ever expanding Industry Essentials educational webinar series taking place next week. On Monday afternoon, we have a very timely and important edition of our NCIA Committee Insight Series entitled Practical Tips for Cannabis Businesses Impacted by Property Damage and Theft. As the country continues to grapple with the murder of George Floyd and its aftermath, we have seen reports that numerous cannabis dispensaries in California, Illinois, Oregon, and elsewhere have been the victims of targeted property damage and theft. In this webinar, members from both the Risk Management and Insurance Committee, as well as the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, will provide practical tips for cannabis businesses that have been impacted recently. As with today's session, this webinar is free for both NCIA members as well as non-members to attend. So if you haven't already, please head to NCIA's website to sign up today and invite as many of your colleagues who might be interested as well. Following that, on Tuesday through Thursday of next week, we are hosting the inaugural Cannabis Caucus Cyber Series events focused on the Heartland and Midwest regions. In case you've missed it over the past few weeks, we're taking everything you love about the members-only Cannabis Caucuses and reformatting it into a one-of-a-kind virtual experience. To kick things off, you'll receive exclusive access to industry insights delivered from national and regional leaders, followed by a live Q&A session with audience members to provide the interaction you expect when participating in an NCIA event. We'll then conclude the evening with a happy half hour featuring an exclusive live musical performance with plenty of curated opportunities to interact with your regional network across multiple platforms. Throughout, we'll be showcasing some suggested strains alongside incredible do-it-yourself recipes for cannabis-infused appetizers, mocktails, and cocktails, while encouraging everyone to share their experience with the creation and consumption process. Log into the NCIA Community Hub today to secure your spot. And if you have any issues during the re uh, registration process, please don't hesitate to reach out to events at thecannabisindustry.org at any time. We'll be kicking it into high gear with these virtual events over the next few days, so stay tuned to your inbox for complete details as they're released. After our Cannabis Caucus series wraps up, we're jumping right back into the thick of things with our Industry Essentials webinars. Our members only fireside chat series is quickly becoming the premier place to interact with elected officials and congressional champions for cannabis reform. In last month's episode, our government relations team was joined by Congressman Lou Correa and Earl Blumenhauer to discuss veterans issues. This month, please join Mike and Michelle as they talk with Congressman Ed Perlmutter for a discussion around the Safe Banking Act. As with the Cannabis Caucus cyber events, this is an exclusive session only open to current NCIA members, so please ensure your membership is up to date, then head to NCIA's website to secure your spot before they're gone. And with that, thank you all so much for participating in another NCIA Industry Essentials educational webinar. A huge thank you again to our panelists, our audience members, our 2,000 member businesses, and over 200 committee members which served this past year. 
We hope all of you will take your uh, participation with NCAA to the next level by applying to join a committee for the upcoming term. If you're not an NCAA member, don't let that stop you. We'll be running some deals on annual packages in conjunction with that, this application period. So as to hear uh, suggested, reach out to him to learn more about how you can get linked into this amazing community. Please complete the attendee survey after leaving the meeting room to gain immediate access to our presentation and exclusive 30 day access to a formatted video recording sent directly to your email inbox. I hope you all have a wonderful week and I look forward to seeing you all again next time for another Industry Essentials Educational Webinar. We'll leave you all with some audio stylings by the resident musician at our Colorado based events, KJ Liss, and SSDP Amplified Project partnered artist, Indigo Sun. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time.